going right now. Sorry, I was going to, there we go. All set. Great. And I will send it over to you in a second. You're awesome. And so this is a hello to those who are in the audience. Um, this, I am Alendria and I'm the editor in chief of Sky News. Um, Jenna and Ben are deeply, deeply engaged <laughs> in Elite Dangerous at the, at the moment. Jenna Hines is the outreach coordinator for RASC and Benoit LaRouche is the aerospace engineer uh, who plays video games with us. <laughs> That's the best title I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I can. <laughs> and so we are, as many of you have probably seen, playing. I'm not going to do the voice today. We're just playing games in space. Um, and today's game is Elite Dangerous, which is a rather complex, uh, what did we call it here? The definitive massive multiplayer space epic. Does that name seem to fit? I stand by it. Yeah, I think so. And Kareem says hi from Montreal. Hi, hi Kareem. From All right, there's your link. And yes, I initially had trouble getting into the game. Verifications didn't work. And there was a lot of stuff that kind of went wrong. So I'm the voice today. I'm not actually playing. So if you have questions, I'll be monitoring chats. Um, Jenna and Ben get to have all the fun. Um, oh, Kareem says he's going to rejoin. Uh, he's having some audio issues. Uh. <sighs> yeah. OK. So yeah. I haven't honked the system because I yeah. think that should be the first thing we do. Yes, I, right accident here. I accidentally already honked the system. So I'm <laughs> going to let you honk the system. But would you like to explain? So so, so there, Ben and I, this is a great game. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can kind of pretty much do whatever you want in this game. It's kind of like life that way. Um, there's not really like a point. There's no end result. I, I don't want to say there's not a point to life, but you know, you can do whatever you want. You can. You there's can, no set path. There's no set path, and there's no like winning. Um, and we're already in space, so we've won that way at least. Um, so I personally have only really explored the exploration path, like the flying around and checking out stars and seeing what the systems are like. Ben has done a little bit more and has been exploring um, the mining path, um, which you need to be able to explore systems to do. Um, and you can do other stuff like bounty hunting and being a pirate. And you can be a UPS fights. delivery guy. You can. That's a yeah. well rewarded. That's how I made most of my money to get into mining. <laughs> you do have to make a fair amount of money there's and there's also two approaches to learning how to play this game they do give you a very comprehensive tutorial for how to do everything um which ben is the thing that you did for the most part right yep i kind of went okay. through the whole tutorial okay um my brother showed up and was like you don't need that and <laughs> then pulled me out of the tutorial <laughs> um which, the whole beginner thing we'll tell you everything <laughs> yeah it was uh it was it was possibly not a very good idea um because I didn't really, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm not sure, Ben, that you have any greater idea of what you're doing, so. No, I, I have no better idea than what you were taught. Actually, your brother showed us a bunch of cool tricks that I didn't even know about honking the system that wasn't covered in the original tutorial. Oh, ridiculous. So, I know. So I, I'm now back in game and you're, to, just to confirm, Ben, you're in LTT 7857, yes? Yep. Okay. Um, do you want to honk the system? I'm gonna I honk really do. Okay. So like honking it. the system is you send out a pulse from your ship and that gives you an idea of all the possible areas in the system to explore, um, all the planets, all the other ships, um, all the stations. And it's the most epic sound. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear the sound because I think I've turned down my volume all the way down, but essentially you send out a scan. I heard no honk. It just went shoot no so it sends out a deep it's like the thx starting sound at a movie yeah. theater which is basically just this like super deep hum that goes out through the system and then after we've gone through the system um so this is kind of an overview of what was already there for the map so you can see that there's a star at the center um 
there's a few asteroid belts and there's some planets with some orbiting bodies. So this one has, it looks like seven moons. Um, oh, and there's even like little tool tips about who were the first pilots to discover the moons and when they were first mapped. Um, and we were also looking at the docks. So these are like um, flying space stations. So it looks like that there's a dock on the third planet of the system. And there's also a refinery on the fourth planet. Um, I'm kind of hoping to figure out how to get to this refinery because I'm assuming that's what I'm going to need to do to do some mining exploration. Um, but first, I'm going to take a look at what we discovered from hogging the system. Now, this is where I'm going to, oh, go ahead. Can I, can, I, can I go through like the how you detect stuff thing? Yes. Cause it's like, it's my absolute favorite part. I'm gonna share my uh, screen and also share audio so that we can do a real quick re-honk. Um, Cause we it's love, worth it. We love a re-honk. Um, I'm gonna jump out of this. Um, and so here comes the honk. So good. <laughs> so satisfying. So satisfying. And this, this like, I love this aspect because this is very close to what we would do in the first place when we're like discovering stuff around us in space. Um, and it's also similar enough to what you do with exoplanets that it makes me very happy. So um, this is the sort of like closer detailed view of the solar system. You can see that the star is down here. And this is basically just letting us zoom in on the kind of signals that we picked up when we honked. Uh, but to pick up on them, you have to kind of scan around and look for specific wavelengths. Some wavelengths are not super great. So like down here, this is all just old dead radio signals. But then there's some areas that have like rocky planets, some that have um, other, like here's one that's, let's see. Ooh, this is an asteroid cluster. Um, so that's useful to know. It discovers it for you. You can get these little like helpful arrows that help you find what's around. Ooh. And now that we've got, Let's you zoom in further. Here we've got, ooh, that's pretty. Got a gas giant. I just love this game so much. <laughs> nice little icy body. Maybe you could, ah, it's water though. You probably couldn't mind that. I think I'm gonna try to go to one of the belt clusters. Is there hazardous materials? Ooh. Ooh, resource extraction sites, Ben. Oh, that's exactly what I need. I just need to discover them on my map so I can map my area to them. It's, it's near Velasquez Dock, it looks like. And it's, it's great, you can see all these like little extra bits of information about each of the planets that you discover on the right hand side, like what percent ice, rock, and metal. Um, this one has water geysers on it. It's tidally locked with, I would guess, either the sun or its other object around here. They've just put so much thought into this. Oh, I love it so much. Anyway, I'm not going to spend the entire time doing this, even though I love it because I'm sure that's boring for all of you. Ben, have you managed to find the other rocky planets? Uh, no, I haven't yet. I can find all the distress calls, the nav beacons, belt clusters. Um, it says I've detected 77 signals, but I don't seem to see 77 signals. I think I'm scanning in the wrong spectrum. That's a lot of signals. There's a lot of icy bodies here. It's kind of boring. We need to do some metal. I'd settle for anything for mining. Oh, I think Alendria is trying to talk and we can't hear her. Yeah. No, Alendria, we can't hear you. Um. Hold on, let me... Let me just detect these last two planets and I'll come and help you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I'm going to pause for a sec. And Yeah, Alendria, we I see you're not muted or anything. 
Ben, if you want to go back to sharing, you can go back to sharing. Oh, yeah. I need um, to just get it. Maybe it's your second. headphones, Alindria? <laughs> Sadly, talking is more is not helping. <laughs> um, Professional gamers here, folks. We know what we're doing, everybody. Um, I'm going to check YouTube. All right, we're good. Um, okay. Well, Andrea's going to leave and come back. That's, pro you know, turn it on and off again. Yeah. Or off and on again. Yeah. Ben, as a satellite engineer, is that something you do regularly? Yes. It clears all the faults. <laughs> Resource extraction site. That seems like exactly what I want. There you go. Um, now I just need to remember how to mark that. Oh, actually, I think if I leave to my map, I'll get it. Just close that. Let's see if we can find some resource. Um, so this is kind of like the heads up display of your ship. And there's actually quite a lot of information that you can access. If you look down and to your right, this is kind of like the ship system alone. We could probably talk for like days. Um, you can customize, you can buy first off different ships. You can customize everything on your ship. So you can customize the engines, you can customize the coolants, you can customize your what's mounted. You have like hard points. So I've uh, on my ship created um, kind of a mining system. I don't know if I can show it. I forget where it's actually located. And you can, can hear me now? There you are. You can hear you now. Hey, cool. Cause yeah, I was asking questions. I was, uh, I, but it's okay, keep going. So I created, mining. yeah, so my ship's set up for mining right now. So I've got the composition scanner and a discovery scanner and a data link scanner. So that lets me kind of scan the system for all the different components. I've got a mining laser, which in theory, if I find something worth mining, I can pew pew it and get the mm -hmm. parts to fall off like the asteroid or the planet or whatever it is. And then there's these things called limpets. Um, I had no idea what a limpet was when I first started playing this game. I'm still not 100% sure, but from what I can tell, they're like friendly torpedoes. Mm -hmm. um, you can really? launch like, yeah, so you can launch like if you're with somebody else and they run out of fuel, you can launch fuel limpets and they're basically like these little capsules and they'll go refuel the ship. Um, for, they're also the little tea cell -y type thing, right? Kind of like barnacles? Yes, is there, is a, there is a, a creature called a limpet and they're like the kind of round version. They're not quite barnacles, like they don't have an opening on top. They yeah. like suck themselves onto the uh, inner tidal zone. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes way more sense. Yeah, because it holds on. It holds on to the side of your ship. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sucks um, itself on. Yeah, so for mining, I've got what's called um, mining limpets, and I basically fire them at whatever debris I've created, and they'll go and basically fetch and retrieve. Um, and you can do a whole bunch of things here. You can check the ship health. You can check your status, how far you've traveled. You can check fuel. You can check in the area what the factions are. Um, yeah, this is like easily hours of information. Okay. Um, what are factions? So there's, as far as I can tell, uh, I haven't dealt with any of the politics in the game, but there is an entire political side to Elite Dangerous. So you can Ooh. join factions and you can do, um, basically part of the piracy is like faction suppression and control. So you can take control over systems. Mm -hmm. You can try to expand that control. You can fight off other incursions. You can... There's like a whole system of politics that I haven't even looked into yet. Mm -hmm. um, I've been just trying to figure out how to get shiny rocks and trade them for money for bigger ships, <laughs> which <laughs> it still it sounds super simple, but is the most fascinating thing I've done in a long time in a video game. This um, game has a lot of replayability to it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah and you can get like ship insurance. There's an insurance Mafia, I guess, out there that will do things for you. I don't really know how it works. Um, I haven't had to use it yet. Um, over on this side of your ship is your kind of navigation and control. Um, so this lets you kind of like look at the whole galaxy map. And this is just to give you an idea of like, we are in this one little system here. And if I zoom out, like this tells you about how vast this game is. Like it is, yeah, it is. It's intimidating. Like I there's saw, people. I saw Arcturus and Altair there. Hmm. So are these like real stars, real systems? Um, I know that you can discover Earth. So you can go to Seoul and find Earth in game. No way. Uh, 
Yeah, so it's not something you can do as a beginner because you need to get all these permits for all the different factions and you need to get a ship that's capable of tra like traveling that long distance. But you can go to Earth in Elite Dangerous, which is super cool. That is insane. Uh, yeah, so this is like, I get intimidated by this. Um, and then you can just look at your own system map, which is what uh, I originally kind of started looking at. Um, and then there's kind of this navigation screen, which is everything that's local, not just in the system, but kind of other things. So these are, when we first honked the system, we discovered some of these things like the belt clusters, one, two, three, and four. And then there's all these other unexplored systems, which I haven't seen yet. I'm hoping somewhere in this list, yeah, resource extraction site. Which one are you going to go to? And I'll go to the same one. Um, I don't know how to identify it. It says resource yeah. extraction site low. Okay. If I go there, maybe you'll be able to find me. Um, so I'm going to, oh. Ooh, bounty hunting, mining, and piracy. Well, this might be really interesting. It says the threat level is two, which is two levels above your <laughs> combat rank of harmless. Um, I haven't done a lot of combat. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> too is, challenging. That is also the, the uh, it's what it's told me as well. So we are in for a treat here. Yeah, let's go see what happens. Yeah. Uh-oh. Um, so now that I've locked into that system, um, the little heads up display at the bottom of the screen um, kind of tells you what you're looking for. And the little up and to the left shows a little highlight. And that's kind of where I'm supposed to be going. So, so I'm going to. While you find that, there. and I'm, I'm doing the same thing now, I'm heading there too. Um, one of the kind of cool things is it gives you distances in a bunch of different units and it switches between units a lot. Um, at the moment, I'm traveling in uh, uh, multiples of the speed of light, which is not scientifically accurate, but that's fine. <laughs> oh, oh, ah, ee. oh, oh, oh. oh. Um, shot. <laughs> no, it's told me to slow down. <laughs> um, and then it tells you, I'm not sure why, um, it tells you how far away uh, places are and then how long it's going to take you to get there. Um, and if you keep your, um, how long it's going to take you to get there, which is like the, the bottom number when you're pointing towards the target at around seven seconds, then it scales because as you slow down, it'll take you still seven seconds to get there and then it'll slow down and it'll continue to take you seven seconds to get there as you slow down more and more and more. Um, and that gets you there without plowing into the thing in theory. Which is very important. Yeah. We love not destroying our ships. And what happens if you wreck your ship? I don't actually know. I feel I like you have to go repair close. it. Yeah, if you have enough credits, I think you can go repair it. Um, if you have insurance, I think you get a payout, which lets you repair the ship. Um, but then your insurance premiums go up. So you get kind of a certain cost. So operating mm -hmm. your ship, like refueling it, um, getting new equipment for it, all that costs a certain amount of credits. And basically, mm -hmm. part of the game is you're just going out there and finding ways of making credits, which is what we're saying. You can do any which way. I made mine just basically playing delivery uh, between yeah. all the stations. Can you, so you said replayability. So can you start from zero again if you mess up really bad? Or do you always have to come back as this character that might have a lot of fines? <laughs> Sounds like a personal experience. Because <laughs> <laughs> you might have been shooting where you shouldn't have been shooting because you didn't know where the shooting button was, hypothetically. Yeah. hypothetically. And also hypothetically, they make it very hard to pay those fines. Like you can't just go back to the place where you hypothetically shot your guns and then pay them there. <laughs> Found that out today in a oh. hypothetical sense. Uh oh. Um, I don't know if you can, I, I'm assuming you can completely start from scratch or even if you just, my screen's flashing up a whole bunch of things right now. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what they mean. Um, I'm assuming you can also just buy a new ship and start a different thing and just do something mm -hmm. new. Oh, whoops. Didn't like it. I changed my aim um but yeah like i started playing just delivery and you can start by just doing exploration so the game actually rewards you for going from system to system and just doing scientific research and then you can go back and you can sell those maps to different factions mm -hmm. um and you can make enough money just doing that to fuel your ship and basically keep on exploring and buying and new that, ships that is uh that's the uh, the approach i've taken ha, he, ha, he, ha, he, ha. oh yeah you don't say. It's, it's going great. Sorry, everything's great, guys. I think I'm just about to blow past Ben. Um, oh, the Tesla refinery's out here. 
This is what we're talking about, where like you can see that my time to destination is now locked at seven seconds because I'm scaling down. I went from the speed like ah. twenty times the speed of light to like kilometers per second. Mm -hmm. I'm like ah. four hundred kilometers per second. Yep. Looks like we're going to be mining in um, the belt. Uh, I think Jenna, something just happened. Really cool. So many things happened. I got I submitted to interdiction. What does that even mean? Uh, I don't know either. Well, well I, I can Google. Submitted fine. Interdiction. I'm sure it's fine. It's probably not that bad. So now I just traversed most of a solar system to get here. And I'm just going to slowly sneak up on this. I'm about 14 kilometers away from what is considered a resource extraction site. It says submit to interdiction. Sounds like you're being arrested. Yeah, I think that's kind of, it says to slow down. Yes. To set speed to zero. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a speeding ticket? I think I'm about to get even more speeding tickets. How do you submit to an interdiction? I understand that you can then run away after doing so, but I guess uh, thrusters. Um, I stopped and then I started moving again. So maybe I am running away. <laughs> I see yeah. somebody at this extraction site and that makes me nervous. If oh. you jump to another system, that's a high wake and they can't mass lock you. If you just enter super cruise and continue to the same system. That's low wake, but you can be mass locked. So you need more speed and time to escape. Huh. Do you have the ability to jump to another system? Uh, I do, but I'm not. I think someone's coming to arrest me. You I'm can run away from them. them. That's kind of, I guess that's the thing. Is that this you is can the point. Run away from them. I don't know. We'll see what happens. If they arrest me, that's okay. I was breaking the law. Well, I can't tell if somebody's Ooh, shooting wow. at me or I'm flying by asteroids that are really small. Ben, are you, I, I'm not looking at your screen right now. Are you the one at the extraction site in the rings? Uh, I am in the extraction site in the rings, but it looks like there's several other ships and there might be a fight going on. Uh -oh. um, Maybe that's why they were telling us not to. Yeah, if, uh, if people are in like jet planes right now, I'm in the equivalent of a minivan. <laughs> um, not equipped to fight. Wow, is something, uh, is that shooting at you? Uh, that was me shooting my mining laser. So I'm going to oh, basically okay. try to find the nearest asteroid because now I've made it to the extraction site. This is so cool. And I'm going to hit the brakes and I'm going to shoot my mining laser. Ben, do you remember how to find each other? Oh. No, not Yeah, go really. ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Alindra. <laughs> Interdictions can be caused by system authority, vessels, bounty hunters, pirates, and other players. Might have been a bounty hunter. They did say there was bounty hunting going on here. Okay. Yeah, then they might have just yeah. left you alone. When an interdiction occurs, the interdictor and their victim, your victim in this case, engage in a brief tug of war. We don't the know that. must follow the victim and maintain the connection. To the Allegedly. <laughs> I'm the victim here. <laughs> Allegedly. Oh, no. Okay. I have a They're, meaning. Yeah, so that's what interdiction is. Upon successfully interdicting, the victim of the interdiction drops out of super cruise mode into normal flight mode with a small amount of heat damage and their FSD locked into a length lengthy cooldown. The interdictor will also I don't suffer think this heat asteroids damage. Give me anything. Ooh. I'm pretty sure I don't have limpets, but I'm still having fun shooting an asteroid. <laughs> you know, it's it's fifty percent of the battle. Yeah. The one thing that I find kind of hard, especially when in navigation, um, when you're in control of the ship, um, is judging distances uh, because you don't get a sense of scale in space very easily. Um, for instance, this rock that I'm aiming at could be a kilometer across or it could be you know, the size of a small planet. Mm -hmm. um, and so trying to judge by sight how close I am to it is kind of difficult. Hmm. I'm going to see if I can fire some limpets at it. I need to fire up my limpet controller, I think. Um, which I don't remember how to do because we are professional gamers. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a good how-to guide. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, when you're there's... playing video games, there's a lot of like really deep in-depth kind of stuff, but sometimes people just want to watch the, how do I escape an interdiction? <laughs> <laughs> so Ben I'm pretty sure I, I, the limpet 
thingies, limbic controllers are under. Oh. Ah, ee, ooh. Oh, hey, I think I turned it on. Okay, cool. Um, oh, but uh, I can't. Oh, there it is, reloading. So now we get to see an Olympic in action? Yeah. I'm just going to uh, fire one. Was that oh. Olympic? Yeah, I just fired a limpet. Oh, I think somebody's shooting me. Oh, there's the limpet. So that's that little, that's why I thought it looked like a little torpedo. And I just came back. Huh. And uh, it says fragment processed. I have no idea what it got me. I'm just going to keep doing this. How, Ben, you know how you have that primary C thing at the top? That was your limpet controller. How did you switch over to that? Uh, N, I think N, for the different fire you. groups. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. From. What was that thing in your top left corner that said too much damage? Um, so that is the, the local chatter. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I don't know what's going on. I'm assuming people are shooting each other around me and I'm just quietly just farming with oh, my yeah, bits here. There's some like a little bit of Danger. space battle in the background. Space battle in the background. Yeah. All right. So this is like um, your Klingons and the Romulans, and you're just kind of hanging around the asteroid yeah. and mining? Yeah, I'm just like the neutral party that's just sitting here going, please don't shoot. <laughs> There's a lot going on, man. Yeah, this is way busier than I've ever seen this game. I think I found you. And these me. are all <laughs> actual people. Like, these aren't robotic characters. Like, these aren't computer yeah, No, characters. these are all human players. Yeah. Uh, the game just recently released a pretty big update, and I think it's made it super popular again. Um, Hi! So originally the game was only in space, and they added a whole portion where you can now fly down to like planets and oh, like explore okay. on foot. Oh, my refinery just, is full. Did you see a laser show up that isn't yours on the thing? Uh, many times, yeah. That's me! That's you? <laughs> yeah, that's me! All right, I'm going to scan around and see if I can see you. Um, well, I don't I have any limpets, gonna... though. So I can just help you zap stuff. I don't know where you are. Um, Hold on. I was totally... Oh, no. I don't want to move. Ah! Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, there's an entire space battle going on yeah. above. Yeah. Just boom. <laughs> so um, I'm going to run away. I think that's a safe <laughs> thing to do. Now that your refinery's full. Yeah. And I'm just going to spend a bit of time getting out of here. And then we're going to go check out the, the Tesla refinery. Yeah. And then thankfully, you guys will not have to watch me try to park because I have an auto parking. I have like a feature which is very important because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to park this thing. Um, shit. Uh, whoops. And I'm track my cargo scoop because it doesn't let you go fast if you're cargo scoop. And so you're both playing with keyboard and mouse, right? Yeah. Um, I'm actually playing with an old PlayStation controller. Oh, okay. oh yeah. fancy. But I still have to use the keyboard because there's so many commands to yeah. input in this game that it's impossible to do without a keyboard. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm just I'm wondering what's the playing. best method of play? Not so the, keyboard and mouse. Yeah. The reason I decided to try to get a controller working for this game is that the ship piloting controls are kind of they're hard when you're using a keyboard and mouse. They weren't intuitive. Well, right. when you have like something that's like a joystick, it makes it a lot easier. Right. But it makes sense to fly like to use like if you had I don't know, like a flight sim kind of Oh yeah. I think that would be oh, ideal yeah. if you had a flight simulator like joystick and even throttle. Mm-hmm. I think that would make the game way Rudder cooler. pedals? Oh, yeah, the full setup. Um, yeah. There's Velasquez dock. There's the Tesla refinery. Lock that destination. Have you been to yeah, I mean, if Flight Sim was available on my computer, I would have ended up with the, um, probably at least, uh, if not full setup, half setup, three quarters setup, <laughs> but like Microsoft Flight Sim. Can't play it on a Mac. Um, so. oh, hard points. Gear and scoop. Oh, what's the hard point retraction? It's you? Uh, you, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Right. 
So now we're going to go to inside system speed, not interstellar. Yeah, there's those. Did you talk about those three levels of speed? Um, no, I haven't. Okay. So, so oh, go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Too polite. So there's like regular cruising speed, which is what you were seeing me when I was navigating around the asteroids, which is they don't actually even give you a unit, but I think you're traveling kilometers per second. Um, then there's intrastellar, I guess, when you're staying within the solar system. And typically that's a fraction of light speed. Uh, and then there's like hyperdrive, I guess is what it's called. And that's when you're going between systems. So we're gonna have to show off hyperdrive because hyperdrive is also super beautiful to see in yeah. the game. I may actually go jump to the system that I had been planning on jumping to. So I can do that. Um, I can share my screen to do that if you want. Yep. Well, I'm just traveling to the refinery right now. So okay. nothing exciting happening. Well, then in that case, let me pause and take over like the tyrant I am. We got a comment on YouTube that someone did not expect us to be streaming Elite Dangerous. Was it because you thought that we were too bad at playing games? Because, yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to head into the galaxy map. I love this. I'm just, I, I just love the science side. This is the view of the world, or the universe, um, or the galaxy, I suppose. And you can go around and jump from star to star, depending on how much fuel you have. Um, and this is sort of where the exploring comes into play. All of the um, orangey type flagged areas are the, I believe the like beginner places. Um, and then that is either me or Ben. I think that's me. Okay, I don't know where I am. Um, yeah, it's you. Yeah, and I think the blue arrow oh. is where you are. That makes sense. We're in the same system. Duh. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, and then, right, I was going to go check out 3484. Um, and so it was relatively close by. You can head in and give it a little... Oh, it's already got the map up. Hooray, hooray. Um, it plots you a little route. And then when you go back, uh, on the bottom left, you can see that the... Um, that's LHS 3484, which is the next target spot. And then a little gimbal that's um, beside the map at the very bottom of the screen. It has a blue glowing dot that tells you when it's going to be uh, in your field of view. And there it is. Speed up. Whoa. So right now we're in um, inter. Inter? Intra. Intra. We're in the, in the solar system speed. Um, yes, intra system. Speed. And so we're going at multiples of the speed of light, um, as you can see in the speed bar on the right-hand side. So I'm at just over the speed of light right now. Um, and when you're far enough away from objects, objects you can hit frameshift drive, charging. frameshift drive, which will let you go fiast and jump to the next system. Fiast is the technical term for the speed you go at. Super fiast. <laughs> doesn't actually tell you how fast you're going, but it's, you can trust this as real fast. Three, Whoa. It is so pretty. So pretty. So is this the one that makes the big wake? Yeah. And then you can get away from your interdictors? I think that's the one, yeah. I haven't yet tried to escape the bounty hunters. But here's our solar system. Have they attacked you? Like tried to bounty steal? I think so. I don't know. I they they stopped anyway. Yeah. All right. If you're at your uh, if you're at your spot now, Ben, I'm just looking at the system. So right. I'm um, approaching. It's still telling me 20 seconds. So right. This is gonna be a good time. Stop screen sharing and switch back over to you. Screen one. I would honk systems for days. <laughs> <laughs> just love it. It's just you never know what you're gonna see, right? So it's always fascinating. And it's just, you end up like the, the images that they have come up with are just beautiful. You get lava worlds. So, so when we were honking in the earlier system, there's a lot of icy planets, which is all fine that they get it. Icy <laughs> stuff has its place, but um, you get these like lava worlds and stuff. And it's just, oh, it's just so cool. Shoot. Okay, and here we are approaching the Tesla refinery. 
So now, thankfully for my piloting skills, um, there's an auto dock feature. Um, and I have to approach within about, I think, seven and a half kilometers. Yeah. And then once we get there, we can request permission to dock. Oh, and it tells me up in the top left that no fire zone entered. That's where everybody gets their fines from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go mm -hmm. to the contact screen and request docking. And it was granted. Now, if I go back, I think I just need to slow down to get to my speed. Yeah, so I'm going to slow down. And now I'm hands off. Everything's on its own. So it looks like it's actually a smaller station. So some of the stations are these like massive artificial gravity spinning wheel systems. Um, and you actually enter inside the station and then they have like multiple docking bays all on the outside. It looks awesome. And there's these little tiny refinery stations, which it looks like I'm going to be just docking on the outside of like this zero gravity um, station. And like, I don't know how they did all the design. I don't know if the worlds and the stations are all like procedurally generated or if somebody went in and like individually designed all of these, but it is, it's fascinating how they've done this game. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. what I've heard from my brother who plays it a lot more than we do uh, is that you do a lot of this like space tourism. You can do this space tourism stuff. Like I remember for a while when I, when I first asked him to help me figure it out, um, he was like, yeah, I have to jump back. Um, I have to jump back like 700 light years to come find you because he was on his way to some remote space station that he wanted to look at. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like the standard interface when you get to a, um, a station. Um, on the upper right, you can see I tried to make my commander kind of look like me. It's very <laughs> important to get the goatee. Um, but you can, there's a huge customization screen. Um, to make both your pilot and your ship look any which way you want. Um, and here's where you can basically choose how you're going to make your money. So you can go to the mission board. Um, these are probably all going to be too high level for me. Um, yeah, so there's available missions. So courier job, that's what I was saying I was originally doing, was just serving as like a delivery guy. Um, a lot of courier jobs, actually. Um, oh, it looks like that's mostly what this station, I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's a refinery, so they're looking for alloys, so units of gallite, fabrics, polymers, bio-waste. Um, but sometimes you'll see there's hunting jobs, piracy jobs, there's exploration jobs. Um, I'm trying to see. Oh. Oh. So they only have a remote workshop and advanced maintenance. There's no place for me. I thought there'd be a place so to refine. Sell or? Yeah, I thought there'd be a place to refine my ores and then sell it. Check what advanced maintenance says. Hmm. Uh, general services, repair, restock. This hmm. was unexpected. And so if that's the case, what do you do? Um, so for now, I think I'm just going to go find another station. So there was another station in the system. Um, oh, I can sell. So this is some way to make some credits here. So these are my mm -hmm. um, universal cartographics, um, basically the data I've created to um, from exploring the systems. So basically, I just made 20,000 credits. Nice. I'm selling that. Yeah, so I'm going to exit and... I need to go into the hangar, maybe? No, hangar, I think, is just for... Well, I can show off the hangar a little bit. Well, maybe I do need to go inside for the hangar, not just the starport services. Whoa. Yeah. And how many stations are there? Every single system I've gone to has had a few, and I don't know how many systems there are, but thousands? Are they being built by individuals, or are these built by the the game i'm sure they're built by the game right i think they're built by the games yeah some of them are owned by factions but it, mm -hmm. uh, okay no this is basically just the same but um one of the things you can do is you can own multiple ships 
And this, I think, might be one of the ways where you can basically store your ship inside. Mm -hmm. And even then, certain ships have uh, multi-crew capability. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a multi-crew ship. Otherwise, potentially, uh, you could have multiple people playing online together, all manning the same ship. Um, I'm assuming the advantage of that would be mostly if you're doing like fighting. So you can have somebody man the guns while somebody else is doing the piloting. Um, I don't know if there's any advantages for exploration or anything else like that. Um, but while my autopilot's on, I'm going to basically go find the other uh, station. So I think it was called Velasquez. Oh, yeah. A Tesla I'm, refinery. I'm about to scoop some fuel. Um, oh, that's cool. So I might, once I... Take over the screen. Yeah, once I get to a steady point where I'm not blowing up my ship... <laughs> um, I will take over the screen. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that happens a lot, at least happens to me a lot, is I tend to get really too close to stars. <laughs> um, and you... Is that right, Icarus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I flew too high. I was too proud. Um, and yeah, your ship has a maximum temperature which it can handle. And if you get too close, you burn up. I'm sure it never happens to anybody else, just me. <laughs> You're the only one. It's your failure and yours alone. That's right. It gives you it's terrifying, it gives you a little heat warning. So on the on the central center console, there's the speed on the right and then on the left there's these three three little hash marks. Um and the number thirty one percent and the thirty one percent on that side indicates how hot I am. Um So if you fly into the sun your ship just deteriorates and game over? Uh nope. yeah. And you lose everything you've got? Well, it depends on how into the sun you fly. Like, okay, yeah, like, there we go. So now I'm fuel scooping, hooray, but my heat, and my heat is steady, so I'm going to hit X and just chill. Um, so, yeah, if you fly directly into sun, it's bad times. If you get too hot, your cabin gets smoky, <laughs> um, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, and when you're fuel scooping, you have to kind of make a judgment call between how hot your ship is and how quickly the fuel is scooping like the fuel is not scooping terribly fast here but it is scooping a little bit mm -hmm. um but your percentage is going up and that's the I, goal yeah that's the key yeah. and the fuel there's like a little fuel thing on the right hand side and you can see that it's, it's going up and i can just sit yeah. here and do nothing for a while um but when i first started playing this game me and my little physics needs to be accurate space brain um thought that i couldn't just sit still and so I kept trying to get myself in orbit around the star. Right. And it was like impossible. <laughs> like, Why is this so hard? They're making this so hard. All I want to do is refuel so I can go and see other cool space things. And my brother was like, you just hit X. Duh. X is basically the brakes. Yeah. It's all stop. And you actually stop as opposed to going into orbit. Yeah. Or getting swallowed by gravity. Uh, I guess it depends there, on what Are there they... gravity wells? Sorry, what was the question? Like, are there gravity wells? Um, like, do like, you fall into a star if you stop? No. I don't think so. Or can you slingshot around and end up in the past, like Star Trek? Like, <laughs> and then you get the whales, right? And you bring the whales back to the future? The best Star Trek movie. <laughs> but so, yeah, can you slingshot around giant I was gonna say, I think that bodies? there's, like, two settings in the game. You can do, like easy mode physics, which is kind of what we're playing on, where you can just hit break and go. Um, and I think there's realistic physics, which you have to manage your momentum. And mm -hmm. that setting, you might be able to actually do slingshots and orbits and all these other things. Mm -hmm. Here's a view of the star. Yeah, those are some pretty intense graphics. Yeah. It's just so pretty. I watch them all day. Anyway, um, I'm. This is a very boring activity. Once you've seen it once, so it's I will. All looks the same. <laughs> yeah, it's just sit there and scoop fuel. So Ben, it's back to you. All right, I'm docking at Velasquez. I just arrived, so I will share my screen. So this is Velasquez dock. And my favorite part of this game so far. Well, I have a lot of favorite parts. <laughs> One of the, my favorite little quirks is that when you come to dock into certain uh, space stations, they play all the same classical music. They basically have this like 
docking in progress. And then they play like that perfect little elevator pitch music, which is awesome. So this looks like it's a slightly bigger space station than the previous one we visited. So maybe it'll have more resources and... They'll take your minerals? I'm hoping. I'm hoping I didn't get those minerals for nothing. But mind you, I'm not too worried because there's a, a hundred different ways of making money in here and mining is just, it used to be accepted that it was like one of the easiest ones to do because couriers mm -hmm. can sometimes take a really long time because when you have a, a beginner ship, your distance of which you can travel to between stations is very small. Mm -hmm. So rather than just going from point A to point B, which is your final destination, you kind of have to do all these little hops and always refuel and always repair your ship from mm -hmm. wear and tear. Um, while mining, you can kind of stay in the same location. If you find a good location, you just kind of go back and forth and create minerals. Mm -hmm. So let's go see what we get in this station in Velasquez. Okay, so we have the commodities market. So that's what I was looking for. Is that the, the same one. guy running this station as the other station? Um, I think it's a different... Rogelio Darty. It's the same Dominion, the UB Dominion. So mm -hmm. it might be the same guy. Same leader. Yeah, because I think they own this whole... Um, oh, okay. So it's the same leader, like yeah. faction? Exactly. So, uh, yeah. Uh, of course, with this game, with everything else that they've done, um, there's a commodities market. And the commodities market is based on the local economy and kind of the galaxy economy. Mm -hmm. So chances are things that I mined in this system are oversupplied in this market. So I'm not going to get a lot of money for it. So if I were right. to take all my mining that I did in this uh, system and go to another really far away system, then there's a good chance that they're going to be worth a lot more. Mm -hmm. Is um, it worth but, it to do that? Uh, sometimes it is. Uh, I haven't figured out how to game that system. Um, I don't pay enough attention to what it is that I'm mining and what mm -hmm. it is that I'm selling. So I tend to just take whatever price is available. Okay. Um, and what are you selling today? So that's what I'm trying to see what I have to sell. Rocks. Rocks and trees and trees and rocks. Rocks and trees and water. Oh, oh, I don't know. Slaves. Yeah. No, there's in every game, of course, there's slavery. There's all those slaves. Um, chemical waste, scraps, non-lethal weapons. Um, so I don't think I have anything that they currently want. Non-lethal weapons. Uh -huh. Like legal drugs, like beer and boot like liquor. Oh, <laughs> non-legal. I said. I thought you said non-lethal. Like there was non-lethal weapons. Like, I was just looking at the legal drugs. What was the non-lethal weapons? They don't really tell you what they are. Just non-lethal weapons in general. Pool noodles. That's right. The wiffle bats. <laughs> <laughs> These people are going to get nerfed to not death. So these are the minerals. I'm assuming this is what I had. Maybe I can find a way to go check what was in my inventory. How do I find out what's in my ship? Um, maybe I need to exit this and then I can go here, go inventory. Oh, there it is. Oh, so that's why I only I forgot about this. So I didn't get enough of the minerals to actually create a sellable commodity. So you basically have to harvest enough to make like uh, one unit of the system. So I was mm. mining bauxite and uranite, but I didn't get enough of either. Can you That's go back and mine Because you were full, weren't you? That's what it said. Um, it says my cargo capacity is only two out of eight and I don't, my hopper mm. is empty. So maybe I just needed to wait for my hopper to process what was already in there. I see. Well, maybe we go and back. And for the and... record, it says that non-lethal weapons are handheld weapons used by law enforcement for personal protection. They so temporarily stun or incapacitate Oops. the human target and are legal in most jurisdictions. That's mm -hmm. the Elite Dangerous Wiki description. <laughs> So yes, wiffle bats. Wiffle bats, yeah. 
I like clubs and wiffle bats. <laughs> uh, all right. While we are taking off, let's do some navigation. Um, I'm wondering, instead of going there, I wonder if there's something else that we can go check out. I'm, I'm totally not because I'm scared of getting shot down by pirates and all this other stuff. Can you find like another happier resource site? That's sort of thinking. With Although all the resource gunny. extraction sites all say hazardous. Could you well, go this to one's even system? higher threat. I wish I could one. share my my like mining inform or my scanning information because all I've been doing for the past little while is sitting around and scanning systems. <laughs> oh, there's one that says nope, that one still has human threat of three. It didn't say hazardous, so I got really excited. <laughs> Let's go check it out. It's the worst that could happen, right? That's uh, the spirit. Where? So when I'm trying to accelerate too fast and go to the speed of light, um, you can see that there's a warning that says frame shift canceled mass locked. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, I guess, mechanisms that they have in the game is that if you're close to any massive um, system, so large space stations, planets, um, they limit your ability to travel at light speeds, which I think is based on physics, right? Because if you travel really fast, close to a really heavy body, then you get a lot more stresses on your ship. So in theory, that, I think that's physics. Yeah. You're the physics, like physics man. Sounds like physics. I'm an engineer. I just know physics just enough to make things work. I don't understand all the basis of physics. <laughs> that's what engineering basically is. It's just <laughs> the minimum of physics knowledge to get things to work. <laughs> oh, man. All I know is that when I was trying to get out away from the station, it, it mass locked and I was like, kept getting fines for shooting my guns when I kept trying to just get out of there. So it was, that was. I have I have two fines for shooting my guns near things, and I haven't figured out how to pay them. And every time I try to pay them, it's like, no, you can't pay them here. That's too easy. Oh, no, um, I'm going too fast. <laughs> um, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna blow right by my destination, which happens all the time to me. Whoa! I thought autopilot was on, Yeet. and it wasn't. Oopsie. So for all you Tesla drivers, I'm sure this is a familiar thing. <laughs> oh, hopefully it's not. <laughs> uh, okay, let's try this again. Uh, resource extraction site. Super cruise assist. Now we should be able to stop on a dime. I have a very pretty star. I think it's probably some sort of red something but it looks magenta. Do you want to share? Sure. Oh, it is. Gonna go I was going to say it's a brown dwarf. OK, this makes me very happy. Sorry, hold on. My brain went too fast. Um, it's a magenta dwarf? So OK, yeah, this has a backstory. Um, so we have a we have a friend who works in um, at the uh, Institut de Recherche sur les Exoplanets um, in Montreal. And she also studied brown dwarfs. And she thought that brown dwarfs got a bit of a bad rap. So brown dwarfs, for those who do not know, are this like kind of gray zone planet between, sorry, gray zone star between um, the coolest stars and the toastiest planets like Jupiter, like gas mm -hmm. giants like that. Um, so they kind of like bridge this gap where there's, they're, they're um, fusing some elements. They're not fusing hydrogen and helium, but they're fusing other elements, which makes them kind of star-like and they produce a lot of heat but they are not quite um, an actual star. So um, when she was talking about it, and you know they've been called brown dwarfs for a long time, she said that they actually emit light in kind of the pinkish, bluish range, blue and red range, oh. um, which makes them magenta dwarfs, except no one calls them that because this, it, they have a bad marketing person, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Basically, their it, PR system is too poorly run. Their PR system is terribly run. They should be called pink dwarfs or magenta dwarfs, which would make them much more appealing because brown dwarfs just kind of sounds like, like, meh, who cares? But mm -hmm. if they're magenta dwarfs... Yeah, they are. The warmest are possibly orange or red, while cooler brown dwarfs would likely appear magenta to the human eye. Right, and why? so why did we call them brown dwarfs then? Answer me that. Riddle me that, scientist. History. Lack of imagination. Yeah. Hack. Oh, I love that sound. <laughs>
The objects now called brown dwarfs were theorized by Shiv Kumar in the 1960s to exist and were originally called black dwarfs, a classification for dark and substellar objects floating freely in space that were not massive enough to sustain hydrogen fusion. Uh, however, the term black dwarf was already in use uh, to refer to cold white dwarfs. Red dwarfs fuse hydrogen and these objects may be luminous at visible wavelengths early in their lives. And because of this, other names were proposed. Planetar, or a substar. Okay. And then in 1975, Jill Carter suggested the term brown dwarf. All right, good job, Jill. So it's Jill's fault. It's, and this isn't from Wikipedia. So there you go. Take take it for what you will. I will switch back to letting Ben share his screen. Okay. Um, so we're from we're on the magenta dwarf camp. Magenta dwarf team. Frederick yeah. Ball. She's the one who uh, who started the magenta dwarf movement. Possibly, I have no idea if that's true. Um, but she started <laughs> it for me. Well, I'm going to check if I'm even harvesting the same. There is a yeah. plant called the growing like a magenta dwarf sun. Oh god. Oh god, nice. what's happening? I think I got hit. You got hit by someone? Uh, No, by an asteroid. Oopsie. I know what I'm doing. (laughs) Sounds like it. I was not just checking what radio station was playing while getting smacked around by a big rock. (laughs) (laughs) I believe you, Ben. Huge. It, I don't know if you could see, but like this area kind of looks like frozen ice compared to like the other areas. Do you think if you shoot at the icy area, you get icy things? That's what I was wondering. I wonder. What's this person saying now? Crime has been reported here. All <gasps> ships will be scanned. <gasps> Are you doing crime, Ben? Um, as far as I know, this asteroid has no rights, so I'm allowed to shoot it. That's fair. So there are bodies within the systems that have rights, or no? I, it appears to be the case. Well, I mean, that kind of brings in the space law discussion, right? Mm-hmm. That, like, who owns rocks? Mm-hmm. Does anybody There's- own rocks? Well, that's that's tricky because right now, like space yeah. law, I think is just in its infancy, and there's not a lot of um, like, there's not a lot established already. So I know that they're still trying to like even the rights for like orbiting a planet like Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that we're dealing with right now is a lot of overcrowding in Earth orbit, mm-hmm. and like who owns the right to orbit Earth at a certain mm-hmm. location, um, and Right now, everybody is just kind of playing together and playing nicely, and we're all getting along, but that's because we've just managed to avoid conflict so far. So there's not a lot of, oh, my refiner's full again. So there's not a lot of like, there's no enforcement because there hasn't needed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, So this is kind of a neat thing to think about is like, if space were to, or when space, I guess, is going to get way more crowded, how is that going to be handled? I know as an astronomical society that there's a lot of concern for things like light pollution with Mm -hmm. the number of satellites that are currently being launched in orbit. And that's a, you know, that's a really hard, you know, access to internet and communication for the entire planet and maintaining lack of light pollution for star observations are both very important goals on both sides. Mm -hmm. It's a very hard thing to argue one way or the other. Um, Hopefully there's just going to, somebody's going to come up with a super clever solution where we can make maybe very small satellites and we never have to worry about blocking the view or we have, I don't know, orbiting telescope platforms so we can look from beyond Earth's orbit to see the stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's a tricky balance because then that issue becomes only, only the people with the most money to develop space-based telescopes have access then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully by that point we'll hit like Star Trek Utopia with like replicators and money's not a thing anymore. You can just get anything you want. Can we give Jeffrey Bezos a call? <laughs> hey buddy. Yeah. Fun my space telescope. <laughs> <laughs> Got a couple of requests. 
<laughs> well, we are running up on eight o'clock here. Oh man, I feel like we barely got to start talking about this game. <laughs> it's true, it's huge. Any last words? Anything about it that you'd like to convey to our really if loyal audience? If you ever wanted to buy like a space station wagon and explore space, this is <laughs> the game for you. It is fun. It's engaging. It's fascinating. It's challenging. It's complicated. It's, it's everything I was looking for in a game that I didn't know I was looking for. Yeah, it's pretty, so. it's pretty awesome. And it's a very nice of the, depending on the path that you choose, it can either be a super tense game um, in a slightly different way than Out of Space, which we were playing last week. Mm -hmm. um, or it can be just like a super chill game. You can go and you can look at pretty planets and um, explore star systems and fly around with your friends and stuff like that. It's a, it's a kind of a nice catch-all if you like pilot first person kind of games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Uh... And so next week, we're going to be playing Among Us. Yes, I love Among Us. <laughs> this is going to be great. And so this is when you find out how good of a liar your friends are. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or how bad. You're a fantastic liar. <laughs> I mean that I in the most respectful, <laughs> polite way possible. <laughs> I'm I'm just uh, I'm surprised at all the things, and I really didn't. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I'm just innocent over here. I have no idea what's going on. Well, now we know that Alundria knows what's going on. That's right. So she can't pull that. I can't play that, that anymore. What's this button do again? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, How what's do I do a task? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if any of you want to, I don't know if we're actually doing this. Lender, did you want to have people join us for The Last Among Us? Well, yeah, I guess it, it would be awesome if people did. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start it up next week and we'll put the code in the, in the Zoom chat. That way it's folks from the Zoom, uh, th those who have registered. Um, so if you're really into Among Us, register and uh, then it'll be first, first in, first serve, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. we'll see how good y'all are at lying. <laughs> we're going to have to have like an observer because if you're loading and sharing your screen and you're the one that's the... Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're that like, okay, everybody tricky. look away. Just pretend it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. Close your eyes. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll think about how this will technically work on, mm -hmm. on the side and then we'll see what we can do. We can always <laughs> pause it during those like we can run a few rounds and then like pause it, like pause the video and just That's have a three. Um, so you don't see the screen share. At least in the part where it tells you whether or not you're the imposter. The imposter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that'll okay. be tricky. Well, thanks y'all for joining. It's been thanks, wonderful. Everybody. Have a great night, everyone. And we'll see you next week.